everyone, it's Max and welcome to a new week's reading vlog. I just got out of the shower so my hair is very wet but I thought I would start this vlog. It is a day early. I'm actually starting this on Sunday but that is because I finished all the books I wanted to for last week so I thought why not get a head start on this vlog because I have some pretty ambitious reading plans. I do only have three books on my TBR but they are all predicted five-star reads and they're all quite long. So the first book I'm going to talk about is my audiobook and that is Spine of the Dragon by Kevin J. Anderson. Now this I might have to just like pro like listen to for the next week and like almost two weeks um, left of the month. And this goes towards the TBR card to read a TBR veteran. It is one of the books that I have owned the longest, so I am very excited. This is, this takes place in a fantasy world where once upon a time there were two species. There were humans and a different species and a god created them to defeat a dragon. And they were able to and the humans were this other species slaves. And then I don't know what happened, but the other species like disappeared and now it's like, thousands I believe of years in the future maybe even like a million or something and these creatures these other species in the dragon have become myth and legend and but then all of a sudden the other species shows up again and wants the humans to be their slaves I am very excited if I I am really hoping I love this one because I do have the sequel like I bought it and it is on my May TBR so fingers crossed that I like really enjoy it or else I'm a little screwed <laughs> but I do think I'm going to enjoy it and I'm hoping that the audiobook is really great the first physical book on my TBR is going to be Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Last Hours series and I, you know, this is a hesitant five-star prediction because I didn't love the first book in this series but this has Jack the Ripper killing Shadowhunters. So like... I love it. I am like, I don't know, this sounds like awful, but I am fascinated with like serial killers like Jack the Ripper, H.H. Holmes, and I just like, I love when they are in literature, like the Stalking the Jack the Ripper series, um, which has both of them funnily enough, but <laughs> you know, so having Jack the Ripper in this, I am pumped. I'm excited to see how she works that in, like if the shadow hunters are killed and the glamour makes them look like prostitutes, like the people that Jack the Ripper actually killed, or like what's gonna happen there. I am 58 pages of the way through, so you know, I barely made a dent, but I do have 600 pages left, and I am hoping to make a big dent in this today, and this is the main reason why I started the vlog a day early, is because tomorrow, 911 and 911 Lone Star are back from their five week hiatus and I am so excited but what happens is that that does take up two hours of my like night time and then I also want to go work out so that is three hours I don't have to read so I need I really want to get a nice good head start on this so that I can finish it on Tuesday because because the next book that I want to read does take me longer at least the series has in the past so I am hoping to bang to bust through this because I fly through Cassandra Clare's books so that I can give myself more time to read The House of Always by Jen Lyons. This is the fourth book in the Chorus of Dragons series, the first one being Ruin of Kings, then The Name of All Things, Memory of Souls, and now The House of Always. I have an e-arc of this on NetGalley, which I am so so excited for. This was without a doubt my favorite series of 2020. The book series was only eclipsed for my favorite book of the year by Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, uh, which was just like perfection. <laughs> so I am so excited to pick up the fourth book. The third book ended on such a cliffhanger and this series follows a group of people who are prophesied to bring about the end of the world. The first book specifically focuses on Kieran who is the bastard son of a lord... I think one of like the main lords of this country, I think, maybe king. Honestly, God, I can't remember. 
it's also like, I don't know, the politics are a little confusing. And honestly, like you kind of got to get through like the some of the book to really start grasping it. And Memory of Souls, without a doubt, really started to bring some of these concepts together. And really kind of the world and the mythology and kind of the history really started to take hold. And it really made a lot more sense. I don't want to say anything else because honestly, I think it will be spoilers. But if you haven't picked up the series, please do. It is so good. I am so excited. This one comes out May 12th, I want to say. So I am so pumped to be picking it up before it comes out. That goes towards uh, the TBR card to read an auto-read author because Jen Lyons, without a doubt, is an auto-read author. And Chain of Iron goes towards the TBR card to read a booktube favorite. Cassandra Clare, in general, is for sure a booktube favorite, but this is her newest release, and I have been seeing it, you know, everywhere. So, without a doubt, this goes towards booktube favorite. I am so excited for my TBR this week. I just, I'm hoping to love all of them. So, I'm trying to make it so that I finish this on Tuesday, maybe give myself Wednesday through Friday for The House of Always, and then two days to like read more of Spine of the Dragon if I like, based on like where I've gotten to in the audiobook. This one is 656 pages, and I believe Spine of the Dragon and The House of Always are both in the 500s. So honestly, I mean, yeah, that's kind of counterproductive that this is the longest one, and I'm giving it one of the shortest amounts of time, but I'm trying, I'm really hope to bang through a lot of this today. It is 12.30 right now, so I'm going to read, I'm hoping a couple hundred pages of this, then take my dog for a nice long walk. I am home alone. I'm a little bummed, because I didn't know I was gonna be home alone until yesterday, and I would have brought my May TBR here to film it, especially because it's beautiful out, and it's daytime, and I could have filmed but I don't want to go all the way to my mom's house, which is about a 20 minute drive to get all of the books. I only have two of the books here, so I just can't do it. And I'm really bummed about it. I, this would have been just like so perfect. I'm also this week moving into my office space, which is very exciting, but also means I'm not going to have as much like availability to film because I used to film a lot during my lunch breaks, but I won't be able to do that once I am in an office. But I am really excited to be moving into an office. It's going to happen on Wednesday. So I've got a couple more days of working from my mom's house where I will try to film my May TBR because that is going up this week. And then yeah, go from there. But I am very excited for this TBR. In the 56 pages that I've read of this, I have enjoyed it. This series follows the children of like Tessa and Will and the car stairs and Cecily and like everyone that we know and love from the Infernal Devices series, uh, which I loved, but I don't know, Cassandra Clare's last two series, The Dark Artifices and this one, I'm not enjoying as much. I really didn't enjoy The Dark Artifices, honestly. I just, I did not like the main romance, which is such an unpopular opinion. I know, I hated it. I just like really like you had to fall in love with like the one person who is forbidden. You had to do it. No, you couldn't find someone else. Like, I don't know. It just drives me crazy. I hate forbidden love so much. And I loved them as friends. And like, like I don't want, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that it's Emma and Julia and their pair of batai. I loved them as pair of batai, but I did not like the romance at all. So... We'll see. This one also has just like a lot of like love squares and triangles and dodecahedrons. So it's just like, I don't know. I just don't like, they're using two of my least favorite tropes. Or this one's, you know, love triangles and stuff, which I just hate. But I do love a fake engagement slash fake wedding, which is happening in this sequel. So... Let's hope that this really, bringing in Jack the Ripper and a fake marriage, I'm really hoping that it does it for me. But we shall see, and I'll talk to you once I've made some more progress. All right, everyone, it is two, and I have read a hundred, well, no, I am on page 165 of Chain of Iron. So I've read like a hundred and about 10 pages. It's going well. I'm enjoying it. There are some subplots that I'm not like loving, uh, but overall it's going well. Uh, not a lot has happened with the overall plot of like 
Jack the Ripper yet. Like we get snippets before every chapter of his point of view. Um, and they've like briefly mentioned one shadow hunter has been killed, but I am hoping that that plot comes more into play soon so that like the actual plot of the book picks up because it's been pretty just a day in the life for them, except one of those days being Cordelia's wedding. I am interested to see where it goes. I am starting to ship Cordelia and James more, um, which... I don't know, I didn't really expect to happen. I've kind of been shipping her with Anna Lightwood, who I know she's not gonna end up with. Um, and then I'm also shipping her with Matthew Fairchild. But I don't know, I think, but now that I know that there might be something going on plot-wise about James, um, I could get behind shipping them a little bit more. But we'll see how this goes. I'm trying to stay vague a little bit, but it's like not working. I think it just sounds confusing. But anyways, I'm gonna go take my dog for a walk now and then because I think it's kind of starting to cool down It's very hot out, but then I'm gonna come back read another hundred pages and Probably check in with you then I want to get at least to page 356 today So that I could like try and read a hundred pages tomorrow and then like 200 pages on Tuesday But we'll see maybe I can get even further, but that's the goal at least to get to page 356 today so I'll talk to you all once I've made some more progress. Hi everyone. Okay, so it is six. I got very sunburnt today, right here and right here. It's very obvious that the sun was against this part of my body because the other part is like not burnt at all. It's not great, not great, and it doesn't feel great either. Yikes, we'll see what happens, let's hope. It doesn't peel or anything, but I have gotten to page 270 of Chain of Iron. It is taking me a bit longer than expected, but I am still enjoying it. I realize I don't think it is Jack the Ripper. I just thought it was because the first quote that she, um, that Cassandra Clare has is you'll soon hear of me with my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle over the last job to write with but it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink it is fit enough I hope. From Jack the Ripper. So I thought that like he was going to be the killer which I probably shouldn't have. Like he killed prostitutes uh, back in the day. So I think it's just like some other person that like it's just kind of during the time of Jack the Ripper which I'm a little bummed about because I was really hoping it was going to actually be like a Jack the Ripper thing but uh, it isn't, which is sad. <laughs> I'm a little bummed about it. But I am 41% the way through, and I'm going to try and at least get to 50% of the way through, which is 328 pages, which is only like less than 30 pages of like where I like wanted to be by the end of the day. So if I can get to like 350 something pages, I would still be very pleased. Ooh, there is a next... Part two is on page, oh my goodness, like 375. So I might actually just try and get to page 375, so 100 pages from where I am. And if I can read more, then that's great, but that's like a nice spot to stop. We'll see. Uh, I definitely wanna at least get there. My dad is on his way back, so this might, this next 100 pages might take place throughout the night, and that's why I think I might not get any more. Um, I took my dog for a walk and everything, so we're all good there. And I don't know, I guess that's all I've got for you. I might not be able to update you until later tonight. So I thought I would give you an update. And my battery's flashing, so that's really fun. I might not be able to give you an update until tomorrow. Overall, I am enjoying it and I'm excited to see what happens next. Hi everyone, it's Wednesday. I did not update you yesterday and that's because I didn't read anything. Um, yeah, I just, did I update you the past two days? Oh my god, I don't think I have. Shoot. So yesterday I didn't read anything, and on Monday I read 100 pages of Chain of Gold Iron, which I don't have on me right now, but I'm enjoying it. I just, you know, Monday I had new episodes of 911 and 911 Lone Star, both of which 
were amazing. And then my mom is watching 911. She asked if I wanted to watch some with her yesterday, and we watched a lot. And I just didn't read anything. So, yeah. It is 5 what 541 and i am ju i just finished filming my may tbr which i'm feeling really great about and so i am now gonna go and read i've got 180 pages left and i definitely want to finish it today so that i can start the house of always tomorrow what this does mean is I probably won't be finishing Spine of the Dragon this week. That will have to be a next week plan, but I do want to at least start it for sure. But, you know, who knows? If I just start on Sunday, I'll probably just, like I did with this vlog, start next week's vlog on Sunday as well. But we'll see. I definitely for sure want to finish Chain of Iron and The House of Always this week. I'm, I am enjoying Chain of Iron, for sure. It's definitely not a five-star read. It's probably going to be around a four-star. Uh, Cassandra Clare just doesn't wow me like she used to. Her writing doesn't wow me. Her stories don't wow me. The issue that I'm having with this trilogy is that I'm not finding, like, one overall plot. Like, you know, the Infernal Devices and the Mortal Instruments and even the Dark Artifices all had obvious plots, like series plots of like one main bad guy. And I guess the bad guy could be this one character in this trilogy, but it doesn't feel that like serious. It doesn't feel like there's that high of stakes um, with this bad guy. So I'm not like loving it. I don't feel, I'm not feeling the stakes. I'm not feeling like the high risk, high energy that I have in her past books. So it's going okay, but there's no, no real like drive and like need to read it. But I'm going to sit down now and read as much as I can, and I will talk to you once I've made some more progress. All right, it's 11.25, and I just finished Chain of Iron. Not good. Not good. I'm giving it a three out of five stars. I'm just, I'm just sick of it. <laughs> I don't, the love triangle is stupid. The miscommunication and no communication and everyone has to be lying. Ugh, it just drives me crazy. I hate these tropes and Cassandra Clare is just using them too much. And this is like the problem with having parents be characters where they're not telling their parents anything and I'm like, you're all stupid. Like, tell your parents. They are people that we know and love and they will understand. And you guys are blowing this all out of proportion on like why you can't tell your parents. And it's just stupid. It's so stupid. And I was just, by the end, the last 50 pages really just did it in for me. I was like, oh my god, like too many tropes were just like shoved in our face all at once and it was just like gross and I'm just so disappointed I was just like by the end by the last 50 pages I was just like just get me through it and it was just bad the ending was bad and honestly I'm like what is the plot like Belial is the bad guy Tatiana is the bad guy but like I don't even know what anyone is working towards. No one is working towards anything. So like this last book is just gonna be like random. I don't know. It's just like it all ended and it's like everyone is so like randomly spaced out and none of them are like working towards a common goal. So the last book is just like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I think I'm probably being harsh, but honestly, as I was reading it, I was like, yeah, this is fine, but it's just fine. I don't think it's, like, anything great. It was very average, so maybe, like, a 3.25 out of 5 stars, but right now it's a 3, which is just sad and disappointing, and it's so dark in here. That's because I have four lights up here, and two of them are blown. One of them just blow blue, so that's why it's not much lighting, but... I'm just disappointed. I'm sad. I'm sad that this is just not good. And I feel like Cassandra Clare is just kind of going downhill. I don't know if it's my, like, reading, like, what I enjoy reading nowadays has made it go downhill. Or if her aunt writing has honestly and plots. This might be it for Cassandra Clare and myself. I mean, I probably want to finish the series. But after that, I think I'm done. I don't know if she's announced another Shadowhunter series, honestly. Um, I can't remember. But if it follows, like, Julian and Emma, I'm done. I did not like the Dark Artifices. And, yeah. Very disappointed. 
So I'm really hoping that the house of always makes me happy. <laughs> Tomorrow I have my second day in my office. Uh, today slowed down. It was pretty slow. So I'm hoping that tomorrow might also be another relaxing day. Maybe I'll get some reading in and just relax. And yeah, but I'm gonna go to bed and I'll talk to you once I've started The House of Always. Good night. Hi everyone, it's Friday. I'm really sorry if this echo is terrible. I am in my office and there's literally only my desk in this whole place, so it's a very echoey. I am 21% of the way through The House of Always. So I'm like 115 pages into it. I'm enjoying it very confused honestly there are so many characters i don't remember who like this big group of characters are <laughs> and so like they're talking and i'm just like who are you there was a recap at the beginning but i still just i don't know i can't remember them so i'm just like reading and a little confused but that always happens in this series where i'm a little confused at the beginning and then like i get into it and then i'm just like sucked in and in love so I'm probably not gonna finish this until Sunday. So I think this week is probably just gonna be Chain of Iron and The House of Always, which is fine. Um, next week I'll read Spine of the Dragon and this is coming in, which is just really fun. But yeah, so overall I'm enjoying it. The writing's good, but I'm just like a little confused. <laughs> I understand like one of the points of views like very well. Like I'm like, yeah, I'm, I got it. I'm with ya. Um, and then as the book goes along, I'm like remembering more characters and like what they did. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, this is that person. Oh yeah, okay, this is that person. Like, so hopefully that just continues to happen throughout the book. We shall see. I am enjoying it though. So I'm gonna read while I can, like during the day. I think I'm gonna try and go to the gym at lunch because then my best friend and I are FaceTiming to watch Shadow of Bone tonight and tomorrow. So really excited about that. And yeah, I'll talk to you all once I've made some more progress or with uh, my fe thoughts and feelings on Shadow of Bone. All right, everyone, it is 10.30 and I, or 10.40, and I am 50% of the way through The House of Always. I definitely made up for the 5% that I didn't read last night. And I'm kind of right where I want to be for finishing this on Sunday, which I think is just what's going to have to happen because... It's slow going. I'm not reading this as fast as Memory of Souls. I've definitely started to get like faster and faster as the book has progressed. I'm remembering more and more of like the characters and what happened. I do think I would be enjoying it a lot more if I read the books like all together or like a lot closer apart or closer together than I have between um, the Memory of Souls and this one. So probably when the fifth book comes out, I will just reread the whole series leading up to it <laughs> because it's a little confusing. It's a little hard to grasp. So honestly, I don't know. I don't want to suggest like waiting till the series is finished to read all of them because who knows when that will be. But if you want to start the series, binge it like read the whole series within a short amount of time I mean months you know um so that you've got all this information clear because there's just so much to this series and it's it's a little confusing for sure but I am enjoying it I love our characters I love Kieran so much and Janelle and other characters the hardest part is that like almost all the characters' names either start with a T or an S. And it's usually TH something and SH something. So it's just like everyone has the same name. And I'm just like reading it, trying to remember, okay, which TH is this? Which S is this? Because they all have two similar names. Like honestly, Jen Lyons' favorite letters have got to be S and T because like every single name is an S and a T. Of course, not our two main characters, but I swear like everyone else's names. And then there's also a few G's. I'm like, can you just have a little variation? Have a little bit of difference? But no. This has gotten terrible. It's huge. It's awful. But yeah, thank God I filmed my May TBR already. I am halfway through Shadow and Bone and I'm really enjoying it. I hate Mal. I know that's like a common, a lot of people don't like him. But in the show, he's better, and not because I find him attractive. I honestly actually don't really find the actor attractive. But wow, the crows are killing it. Alina is killing it. Ben Barnes has my entire heart. He's honestly 
killing it and like everyone fan casts him right like since like I read it since like the dawning of time people fan casted Ben Barnes as the Darkling so the fact that they got Ben Barnes to play the Darkling is amazing and like everything I could have hoped for so yeah it's a lot of fun um my best friend and I are four episodes in so we do have four more very excited um because you know the crows this isn't they're not in this part of the story like this isn't six of crows this is before that so it's like interesting to watch like their point of view and storyline because it's new you know we've read shadow and bone and they're following shadow and bone so well like wow it is so close to it we do get a metal storyline which is making me like him more um so that's interesting but you also know like where he ends up so it's nice to have the six of crows where we honestly do not know what's happening what's going to happen next and it's very good so yeah i'm really happy but i'm gonna go to bed yeah it's like 10 40 i'm just tired it's been a long week so i'm gonna go to bed and i will talk to you all tomorrow well, either once i have finished shadow and bone or once i have made some more progress in the house of always Hi guys, it is 2 p.m. on Saturday and I just finished Shadow and Bone. It's actually really good. I love the scenes where the crows and like Alina were in the same like space. <laughs> it was so much fun. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. It followed the book really closely except like the crows being there, but honestly, a welcome addition. But it was really great. I'm really excited for season two whenever that may come out. It is number one on Netflix right now, so hopefully that will get it green lit for another season. But this is awful. It is so huge, but it is crappy out. So I'm gonna curl up on the couch and read The House of Always and just hang out for the rest of the day. I'll go to the gym at some point. I think I'll read some and then go to the gym. But I'll talk to you all once I've made some pro more progress in The House of Always. Hi everyone, it is 4.34 and I am just about to head to the gym, but I am 75% of the way through The House of Always. I am 408 pages out of 544 pages into it. I am enjoying it. I'm still very confused about the plotline of everyone except Kieran, Janelle, and Theda, Thaden... Again, all these TH names really run together uh, because they're all together and that plot line totally makes sense. Everyone else's is really confusing and they keep jumping back in time, which is like Jen Lines does that. That's like her books where there's one like plot line that's like present day and then the ne the other plot line is like leading like right after the events of the last book and like leading up to present day. And usually I can follow along just fine. It's really great, but this jumps around so much and it's like, you know, it's all these people's point of views leading up to these events and some of them even before if we didn't really know them until this like until memory of souls which i just got in the mail a hard copy of memory of souls because i read an arc of this in august loved it it's definitely my favorite of the series and so i'm so excited to own it um and honestly reading the house of always really makes me want to go back and reread the series close enough together where i have everything in my mind i think i'll do that when it's closer to when the fifth book comes out which honestly i'm not sure when it is it might be i mean it might be august because that's friggin when memory of souls came out but it also might be next may or something i'm not sure but We'll see. I'm, I am enjoying it though. I love the writing. I love our main characters and I am remembering more and more of the events. I just feel like some of these characters I honestly cannot remember at all. And so like when it shows like what they were up to, I'm just like, what is going on? But I also don't feel like they have a plot line. Like their present day plot line doesn't even feel like a plot. Like I, they're just like hanging out in what feels like a house guarding our three main characters, which maybe that is their only own plot line. And they also like keep like almost like seeing visions. So what we're seeing like in the past are visions that they're all having collectively right now. And I'm just like not sure like who's making that happen. Is Val Karoth the main bad guy doing that? And if so, like why? Like none of this is making sense. And so I'm hoping, I don't know if it's because I'm just like 
not understanding or if you're supposed to be confused and by the end we get it which may be the case and also if it if that is the case then great I'm totally fine with this happening but if I just like missed it and now I'm just like never gonna get the answer I'm gonna be so confused so we'll see but I'm gonna go to the gym I'm going to try really hard to finish the book tonight I only have 25% of the more pages to go which, I don't know, I guess I can figure out what that is. <laughs> okay, it's 136 more pages, which I can definitely do. My Kindle shows that I have like an hour and 50 something minutes left, so that's like two hours, which I can definitely do. So I'm going to try so hard to do it, and then I think just read as much of Spine of the Dragon as I can tomorrow. It is very gloomy out. It's very gloomy out today. It's raining right now. It's gonna, it's supposed to be really gloomy tomorrow. I don't have much planned, so I'm kind of hoping to be able to bust out a lot of Spine of the Dragon. I'm hoping it's a little bit easier of a read because um, Jen Lyons' books, they're, they're a lot. You got to pay attention, which I enjoy a lot of the time. I do love deep, intricate, intricate high fantasies, but I don't think I'm quite in the mood to be reading it. So I think that's why I'm so confused and it's taking me so long is because I'm just not quite in the reading mood to be reading this in-depth, deep, high fantasy. Also, I wonder if I'm missing a lot by not being able to read the end notes because in the physical copy, the end notes are like at the bottom of each page, but in the ARC copy, and maybe even just in like E copies of the book, they're at the end of the chapter. So like, it's so hard. Like, I can't read the end notes because I can't remember what one is in reference to by the time I'm at number, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, and I'm just like so confused that I just like g give up. I gave up and I'm really hoping that that is not like the whole reason why I'm super confused. Who knows? But anyways, I'm going, I'm planning on finishing it tonight. I probably will not check in with you until I'm done. This is kind of my big update for now. Uh, but yeah, it's like 440. I'm going to go to the gym, then try and read as much, finish, the house of always and i will talk to you all once i have done so hopefully <laughs> all right everyone it is 11 40 and i just finished the house of always i enjoyed it by the end it was still pretty confusing <laughs> um i'm gonna give it a four out of five stars which is disappointing because i've given all the others five out of five stars and i was hoping this would be like one big series of five stars which it might be before the fifth installment comes out i'm gonna reread all of the books in a shorter time so that i've got all the information still in my brain and this rating might change uh, once I remember who everyone is and like everything is really fresh it might be like genius and the best book I don't think it will be but it might be <laughs> um so yeah we'll see but that will be when the fifth one comes out which I don't even know if it's been announced yet so I'm gonna check but overall I did enjoy it I am really excited for the fifth book I mean like really excited so yeah, okay, only four have been announced right now, but there is for sure going to be a fifth, like, no doubt. Um, but yeah, so, really enjoyed it. Tomorrow I am going to start Spine of the Dragon. I don't have any plans for tomorrow except, like, go to the gym at some point. So yeah, I'm hoping to make some really good progress in Spine of the Dragon. It's just over 500 pages, so who knows? Maybe I'll be able to start and finish it in one day. It'd be kind of crazy. Um, but who knows, if it's like a bit faster paced than this one, I might be able to do it. It's supposed to be really crappy out, so we can only hope. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna go to bed. It's 11.40, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Good night. Did I accidentally aggravate the pimple that I popped yesterday right before filming this? Yes, it is bleeding, so this is really fun for me. But it is Sunday, it is late. Oh, it's 2.10 and I am 134 pages into Spine of the Dragon and overall I am enjoying it. I wish there was a bit more world building. Like nothing has really been that well explained. Like the Reths have already come back. So in this book they're used, this god named Kerr uh, created two species. He created Reths and humans. Reths to be these powerful magical beings and humans to be their slaves. And they were created to destroy this dragon that he created out of all his bad parts. Like, 
jealousy, anger, like that sort of thing. And it they do, and then the Wraiths go into this huge war between Sand Wraiths and Frost Wraiths. And then they basically eradicate each other, and humans humans are now like this the only species on this planet, and they grow, and they adapt. I don't think they really like evolve much, but like they evolve in their like societies and everything. And now the Wraiths are back after this like long sleep to defeat the dragon again. And both sides, both Wraiths, the Sand and Frost Wraiths, believe that Kerr will choose like the winner to like live with him in like quote unquote like heaven. And the humans, they want the humans to be their slaves again. And the humans are like, wait a second, no, like it's been, it's been 2000 years and we have like created this society and we've like grown from you. And it's like this, they're trying to start this war again. I'm a little confused about the world as a whole because like the sand rats have chosen a country to like try and control and the frost rats have chosen a country but there's like other countries that like haven't been chosen and like one of them has godlings which are I think these creatures and they might have magic and so I'm just like okay so how does magic work in this world like I thought only the rats had magic but now maybe some humans do and just nothing's really been explained very well it's very much like we're dropped in the middle of things like the first chapter the rats come back and I was a little bit like oh I thought we were gonna get a little bit more world building before the rats come but no and there just hasn't been any world building at all like literally none it's just like you're just kind of following this plot the characters are there's one character who's like really pretty well developed um and she is a queen whose name escapes me it's like Is Isra or something and she's pretty well developed and I think her motive makes a lot of sense everyone else is very bland and cookie cutter and there's so many point of views we are following so many people and the chapters aren't differentiated at all it's just a number and then like you just hope that you're understanding who you're following and for a couple of them it makes complete sense king aiden rules this country that the sand rats have taken over uh isrin is the queen of a country that's like very religious and like her priests help her rule basically uh but they're like terrible and very corrupt and like her father who was the king before her raped her for four years before she killed him and like the priest she went to the priest to ask them to help her and they said this was like the godling the godling decided to let it happen so they're gonna just like let it happen and so she's been like against the priest since she took over understandably and so she's really cool and then there's also this character who this other species like human group definitely has magic because they are able to if they put a tattoo on someone it is imbued with magic to make them forget their entire lives and this only happens if they've done something really really bad and this happened to one of our main characters Ellis Ellerin El 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 Elreal, something like that and she um she went into this rage she lost her mind and like there's something about there's like this magical thing that they can use to like make their hands super fiery and she destroyed a school and killed like children and teachers and so they forced her to forget her entire life and it's basically get and then she's banished and so it's basically giving them like a second chance at life but like they don't remember anything except they're given like a, a like a thing that's like here's who you were this is why you've lost your memory and she's working in some mines uh where i think they're literally mining a dragon like the dragon and um because i thought they were just like mining regular coal or whatever but she just struck dragon's blood that came rushing out and then it hardened into rubies and it's super rare so they think it's very auspicious um those are the three characters that have really stood out to me we've also had like one or two chapters from the country that the frost rate wreaths have taken over um, but we've also just like followed I feel like random people and I'm just a little lost and not sure like oh and we're also following the king of a country that Isrin's priests are trying to like 
fight with, like start a war with. She doesn't want the war, but her priests do, and they keep doing stuff behind her back. And this king has one son and a son named Aiden, and I don't know if it's the same Aiden, but he makes it seem like Aiden died. And his old eldest son is like was super coddled by his wife, um, who then and then he walked in on his mother having killed herself, who was the woman who coddled him. And so he's like super damaged, like PTSD sort of thing. Um, he's like scared of everything and very weak in the minds of like the people. And no one really wants him to be king. And his dad's like super scared about uh, like what's gonna happen under his rule. Cause he's like, that's why I think Aiden, his Aiden must have died because he keeps being like, Aiden would have been a great ruler and all this stuff, and I don't know. But it's weird that we'd have two characters named Aiden, unless they he named it after Aiden, who's the king of this other country. Unless what might have happened, I guess, is his son a Aiden, like, took over this country that had been, like, a lot of, there'd been a lot of strife and a lot of, like, infighting, and he, like, he took over by, like, destroying, like, the bad guys, um... I think. And so maybe that is his son. And he just like left that country to like fight and took over this other country. And people love him for it. Like he's not like the bad guy in this scenario. People love him for saving them basically. And he married this woman who has a lot of sway. And so I don't know. Maybe it is the same Aiden, but he went and conquered a different country. And so like his dad's like, man, I wish Aiden could take over my country, but he can't. And so I don't know, but we'll see. I'm hoping that something like that will be addressed because honestly, there's just no explanation so far for basically anything. And I just wish there was some sort of explanation. It is very fast paced. I'm flying through it and I am enjoying it overall. I'm having a good time. I just wish there was a little bit more explanation of like anything but I am gonna sit down I'm gonna try and get to the halfway point and then go to the gym so I am 134 pages in and so halfway through will be 263 so I'm gonna get to around that point and then I'm gonna go to the gym so I will chat with you probably once I've hit the halfway point so I'll see you then. All right, it is 3.30 and I am 264 pages into Spine of the Dragon. So I am just at halfway through and I'm really enjoying it. Things have definitely been explained better. So Aiden is the younger son of the king I was talking about. I still don't know how he became king of his own country, um, but he is and he's a really good king, especially compared to his brother. And his uncle also rules a country on this continent that was ruled by the Reths. Then there are other continents, including the one that has magic, that is Il... Illyries? Il... Oh my god, I just... Illyris who is the queen of this one country that has magic and godlings. But the Reths don't really care about these other continents. They only care about this one because that is where the dragon lives. Now there is a small amount of magic still present in on this continent, but most of it was depleted and wiped out when the Reths had their huge battle. And this battle was actually between two, so they were between two Reth species, races, um, but originally it was two sisters who were fighting over the love of Kerr, who is the god. And so it started with a war between two sisters, basically, and I'm kind of thinking it might end with a war between two brothers, being Aiden and his older brother, because his old, they just met, like, not, like, for the first time, but they just, like, met at their uncle's, uh, in their uncle's country, and his brother thinks that the Reths is a convenient excuse to not, for Aiden not to help him against Illurin's country, while even though both Aiden and his uncle are like, nah, they're real, our countries are being inhabited by the Reths, Aiden's brother refuses to believe it. So I have a feeling either it's gonna culminate with some war between the two of them, or and or between 
Aiden's brother's country and Aluren's country, or they're going to all end up teaming together against the Reths, which that might be like a long-term goal. As we all know, there is a sequel, Venge War, that I have already purchased. So I am in excited that I'm really enjoying this. I It's definitely, the world building is slow, but it's also like interspersed right where it needs to be. So it doesn't feel info dumpy. I do wish that some of these moments were interspersed a little earlier. But overall, I am really, really enjoying it, and I'm excited to see what happens next. I am enjoying the multiple point of views more. I still feel like there are a few more than there needs to be, uh, but our main characters, it's understandable why we have their point of views, because they're basically one from each country. So, like, we are understanding both sides of the war, or, slash being like, no, there shouldn't be a war. Like, it's especially between Allurals... Uh, country and Aiden's father's country because Laurel doesn't want a war. It's her priests that are like forcing it and I think she should just write to Aiden's dad and be like, listen, the priests don't speak for me. I'm trying to curtail them. But like also that would show like weakness. But I think to to stop the war, like a war from happening, she needs to like talk to Aiden's dad. She also needs to freaking get rid of these priests. Just kill them. And then, like, bring in new guys to, like, be yours and, like, be loyal to you. I don't know. I feel like she's just being too lenient with some of these guys. And I know that the head priest is, like, the most powerful man in this country. But she's the queen. So kill him and implement install in, install your own people as priests i guess like make sure they're freaking loyal because these men are like were more loyal to like, your dad and your dad's cause because they were priests before she became queen but i don't know i'm just like i never have the patience for people who put up with their enemies when they're like their own countrymen i'm like girl you are queen friggin kill them and be like get out of here <laughs> or imprison them for treason because they are literally going against you and it just kind of drives me crazy but I am enjoying it. I'm exactly halfway through and I'm really excited to continue. I am going to get ready and go to the gym. I will talk to you once I've made some more progress in Spine of the Dragon. Hi guys. So it is almost midnight on Sunday and I just finished Spine of the Dragon and I really enjoyed it. The Aiden confusion was cleared up. The one thing that I just don't understand is why these people like want war so badly like I really don't get it I really don't understand their motivation for it especially when there's such a larger issue at hand and they're still like no we must have war and it's just like ridiculous <laughs> um I feel like by the end some of these humans were real stupid and real naive and it's like yes obviously that happened like I just feel like they were being a little too naive and optimistic for like their their the people in power. I feel like they were a little too optimistic for being that high up in the hierarchy. Like I feel like they should be expecting everyone to betray them and yet they expect they didn't expect anyone to. But overall, I am going to give it a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I did really enjoy it. I just did have some issues and I'm excited to pick up the sequel. So that means that this week I read three books, all of which were five star predictions, none of which ended up being five stars. But the first book that I finished was Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, which went towards the TBR card to read a booktube favorite, and I gave it a 3.5 out of five stars. Then I read The House of Always by Jen Lyons, which went towards a TBR card to read a book by an auto-read author, which I gave a four out of five stars. And then the last book was for the TBR card to read a TBR vet, and I went with Spine of the Dragon, which I gave a 4.25 out of 5 stars. So overall, I didn't dislike any of the books that I read this week, but they were all slightly disappointing in the fact that I didn't give any of them 5 out of 5 stars. But that is all I have for you, so I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye.